Radio Free Sparrow. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Radio Free Scarrow, episode number 699. I'm Stephen at Edmonton. We're in Vancouver. And Chris in Edmonton. This is a good old classic Radio Free Scarrow recording, everyone. Sunday morning, as we usually do, all, the whole episode in one go, just like the olden days, without recording breaks, kind of like the 1960s Doctor Who um, mm-hmm. be- because, uh, this whole episode, well, the whole episode, we do our news, we do our nonsense, and then we do r- real nonsense, which is fluid links, um, questions and comments submitted by you, the listener, and then we will randomly draw those and bandy about with them for three to four minutes a piece and then put them away as if they never it's, happened. It's like a, a cat playing with a ball of yarn, you know, it's good for a couple of minutes and then it's like, oh. Yeah, I'm done with that. Then it bats away until you take that yarn away and you put it out of the cat's sight and all of a sudden, whoa, 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 where, where's that yarn I was ignoring? Where is that? Where is that? And then the cat goes crazy again. <laughs> where's that yarn I was ignoring? A parable for our times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and then it begins again. Uh, hey, uh, I, I hope um, everyone had fun at London Comic Con and saw all the Doctors Who that were there, including Christopher Eccleston uh, this past weekend. That, that was happening. Um, mm-hmm. I hope everyone is uh, all those going to Hooverville next month, basically the last weekend of, uh, of August, um, up in Dar- up at the Quad in Derby there. Um, if, if not, uh, tickets are still available to go to that with like, people like Sarah Sutton and, uh, oh, I can't even remember who's, uh, who's there, but like Chris Chapman and last week's guest uh, Rob Ritchie are, are there amongst a whole host of uh, people. Michael E. Bryant is there, uh, director mm-hmm. of several 70s Doctor Who episodes, so... Uh, go to hooverville.org and, and, and check out tickets for that. Also, uh, just a follow-up on, because last week was San Diego Comic-Con. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware of that. Uh, there was like... Here's the news. There isn't any. <laughs> there, well, the news is that there was no news, so to speak. But Yes. Yeah, because uh, the news was that, you know, Marvel is churning out a whole bevy of TV shows and movies for their Phase 4. Um also, news, of course, was uh, a, a new trailer and a panel for Star Trek Picard, a series that comes out in 2020, just like Doctor Who comes out in 2020. And a lot of people were saying, wait a second, why wasn't there a Doctor Who panel there? And we were thinking that there would be, but there was not. Well, it there's there's something there that happened, folks. I, I want to get into this a little bit. We even had a Fluid Links question about this, but I'm just going to answer it now because we were going we to talk about this anyway, but... Doctor Who, um, everyone thinks, oh, why didn't the BBC have the budget to, to bring them over or anything like that? What, what What's going on here? Well, they, they scheduled the recording of, of Series 12 to take a two-week break for Comic-Con. Doctor Who is on a two-week production break right now, basically, to allow themselves to have gone to Comic-Con. They... Um, so I don't, and BBC America had a booth. They didn't have a, a real panel mm-hmm. or anything like that. Uh, well, and BBC America also had the, the uh, edge of time uh, for, for the, the VR well. demo. Yep. VR yep. demo. Um, so that's a thing. Uh, so I, I don't know. So it, it wasn't BBC studios fault. I can't imagine Chris Chibnall going, Oh, I don't want to talk about things. Let's not go after all, but everyone gets two weeks off regardless. Uh, so that, that feels not right. So something happened. Something happened in the chain of events there to prevent uh, Doctor Who and BBC America. BBC America foots the bill for that panel um, to be at uh, Comic Con. Uh, I was talking with Kyle Anderson, who also didn't go actually um, this this year. Kyle, uh, our friend, of course, of, of Nerdist. And he said, like, the Sunday schedule looked quite light in comparison to the rest of the weekend. And, to, you know, not traditionally, but often Doctor Who has sort of had a Sunday afternoon panel at Comic-Con. So it almost feels like space was allowed for a Doctor Who panel at some point, but it never happened. So I don't know what to tell you, but the, those those are the, the things that occurred 
um, that did not end up with uh, Doctor Who having a panel. Because, you know, it wasn't like we didn't have a trailer because, hell, uh, you know, if, if Picard, which I think started shooting after Series 12 started... Um, for for Picard recording, for whatever it's worth, I watched the panel for that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And Jerry Ryan said they were in the midst of episode six right now. Yeah, you know, she didn't oh, say. I just say that say, trailer is excellent. She yeah. didn't say if they're doing them in in order or not, but they're no, they're but you, episode six. You can put together. I mean, as Doctor Who has done in the past, you can get put together a pretty quality sizzle reel of a minute or a minute and a half. Um, mm-hmm. with stuff you've already shot, uh, and still get the, uh, the juices flowing a little bit. So, so it wasn't, I mean, that's what RTD did all the time. So. Yeah. So that wasn't the case either. So yeah, there's, there's a mystery there somewhere. I don't know where it fell, fell down between BBC studios, between BBC America, between Comic-Con themselves. I don't know, but, um, there probably should have been a Doctor Who panel and there wasn't. And so Doctor Who doesn't get to um, sort of coast on the uh, the the buzz, the buzz that's happening. Although I imagine you know the the buzz of a new show is 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 palpable. You know everyone's talking about the new Picard show because we've never seen anything of it and we didn't know who was going to be in it or anything like that. We just saw shots of Patrick Stewart and his dog on a vineyard and um, and so once you actually have a isn't that enough? About, I, it kind of is actually. I think you don't need all these other people. We just got to be the dog. Where is the dog? I think, I think based on the reaction I've seen from people, I, I'm possibly the only person underwhelmed by the Picard trailer teaser. Whatever well, you're wrong. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I'm in, I'm intrigued by it. I'm not I'm not I'm not I a discovery too. fan, and I don't want to sound like oh, good things that I know. I, I I honestly I think they almost went like too much. Like oh, you don't need to bring everyone back. I was quite pleased with just having Picard be on this ship, but he's not really in yeah. Starfleet anymore, and it's just like yeah, this well, is, this feels kind of what cool. I what I liked about the trailers is a good balance of the two. Like uh, and Jerry Ryan was a surprise to me. I did not see that one coming. I no. was like I, I kind of figured the data would show up at some point, but yeah. but Jerry Ryan I was like oh all right, and she's fully human from what I can tell, like out in the thing on her head. Yeah. Uh, she's, she's not a Borg of any sort of, but I, I would assume this is about the Borg since they're in it and they're the consummate Picard well, the, villain. The, mm-hmm. the guy that played Hugh in I, Borg yeah, is also he's in it, it too. So. so it's, so it's, I'm, in, I'm also intrigued by this. And also mm-hmm. it's like a little, what's it, seven or eight part thing. It's, it's like a mini series thing that I assume just has the one series. So. Yeah, maybe. Well, and then Marina, Marina Sirtis and Jonathan Frakes being in it, like Frakes is still pretty pretty active as a director. Uh, I don't know what Sirtis is otherwise doing, but uh, don't know. Fra- yeah, yeah, I don't. I don't know if they needed as like you say as as many people back as as will well, be there. Don't forget, this is going to be spread over eight or nine episodes. Mm-hmm. Like, well, yeah, and they'll probably, probably be a substantial amount of time with no old people besides Picard. Yeah, and for all we know, like these, these could be like like eight second cameos rather than exactly, regular yeah. cast or something. So pre credit sequences, and they kill them off each one by one. <laughs> wow, that'd be awesome! I'd yeah. blow my like lungs a, with that. Like a Picard detective mystery show, and, <laughs> and like they kill off Wesley, they kill off Data, they kill off Riker, they kill off Barkley, you know, whatever. And he has to solve. This is why you're not in charge of Star Trek, Chris. Uh, I know. Just, just, just a heads up. You hey, know, me and Tarantino will take this a long way. This franchise. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. No Tarantino. I saw the new Tarantino movie, and I will reiterate: no Tarantino Star Trek. Thank it, you and good day. It uh, it reminds me of I don't know if anyone remembers the uh, the old Police Squad series, which desperately needs yep. to show up on streaming somewhere because it's just brilliant. Yes. Basically, it, it's it's the it it's brilliant. the. Uh, um, the Naked Zaz Gun. team from Airplane that eventually made uh, Naked Gun with Frank Drebin. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the the opening credits, each time they would say a special guest star, and they'd have like a notable guest star who would then be killed in his scene introducing himself <laughs> in the opening credits, and that would be it. And it was brilliant, and that's what they could do with Star Trek, you know, special guests, Jonathan Franks, and he gets killed uh, in the opening but, credits. Just as a complete side note, it is insane that that show failed massively, and then they somehow got this incredible movie series out of it. I know. Six episodes uh but the people were just not ready for it oh god it's just it's brilliant but it is pretty damn funny yeah really is funny track it down if you can good luck good it might be on youtube actually that seems to be the 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 last uh refuge for for shows that never seem to get maybe but paramount owns the rights to naked gun so i wouldn't be surprised if it's not on youtube paramount also owns the right to star trek yeah it does so there could be a crossover in the works I think so. CG Leslie Nielsen, you did it. Grandma Tarkin was just the beginning. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> hope it was the end. 
Anyway, on to uh, other Doctor Who news. Less exciting Doctor Who. Well, somewhat exciting, I guess. Uh, BritBox, we talked about this uh, being a potential. Well, it's finally happening. BritBox is coming to the UK in the fourth quarter of this uh, this calendar year, before the end of 2019, basically. It'll be £5.99 a month. For what? Uh, for those that don't know, BritBox is that uh, thing that BBC and ITV have teamed up to bring you streaming stuff of various uh, uh, archive and, and current um, television. I imagine it, it BritBox as a service is probably more valuable in North America than it might be yeah. in the UK. And I think that's why yeah, some definitely. people are kind of skeptical about whether BritBox will work over there. But uh, but hey, if it's a place to get all of classic Doctor Who, then uh, I'm Which happy. is still on the iPlayer anyway. I mean, I mean, look, in, in the UK, you can just go down to the store and buy these DVD box sets, which we really can't unless it's a big, big deal mo- show that transcends, well, you know, coming over to North America. And and this is more um, this is more Channel Four than this ITV and uh, BBC. But like, what Channel Four does is they 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 very heavily promote their their four on demand box set stuff, and uh, they'll even like for uh, Matt Berry's new series Year of the Rabbit. All the stuff was online before it ever got broadcast, so you can go and watch it even before it hits the airwaves on the on the catch up service. Ah, uh, I see. Well. Um, good, good luck. <laughs> good luck, BritBox in the UK. That's all I have to say about that, I guess. Well, if there's one thing uh, archive television fans in the mm-hmm. UK aren't, it's, um, uh, grumpy about things. That's, so I'm sure everything will work That's out a good fine. point. Act. Yeah. I mean, well, the BBC store failed, uh, because hmm. it was confusing a little bit. And this is just basically a streaming service instead of like, hey, you can buy the streaming things and download them maybe, but not anymore. So hopefully this is the way of the future and people can watch more classic Doctor Who, thus bringing this I've said it before, five bucks a month just to have Doctor Who on my beck and call is well worth the price. I know. I use it almost predominantly for for screen grabs. Like, ah, I remember that (laughs) quote. I want to screen grab that quote. (laughs) Because, you know, I got the DVD. It's basically your... yeah. It's your Doctor Who Frankie act. That's what it's, it is. It really it's, is. It's the new. It's the new series that's on iPlayer, not the classic series. I, I was going to say, yeah, I didn't think so. Yeah, yeah I didn't. Yeah, so there so is all, all the new series when they threw it on there last fall for, for to promote um, series eleven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So where's where's what's your uh, what's your Ducktales okay. source uh, for for your your supercut of David Tennant saying the f word. Oh, uh, I don't know that. Uh, so yeah, for those that don't know, uh, there was so uh, uh, two or three or four days ago, someone posted a one minute solid of David Tennant swearing, which apparently was from um, Good Omens. Like it might have been from the actual recording sessions or something or, or the tracks. I don't know, but somebody posted that, and uh, I, I then a couple of people later on I saw um, said, "Oh, this would be amazing if it was like Ducktales." And I actually I did un- unbeknownst to me, I quote tweeted the the audio and said. With typo and all, I said, this dialogue from DuckTales, I suppose that this is just dialogue from DuckTales. And then later that day, I'm thinking, what if I actually did that? What if I actually got some DuckTales clips and did a, because it's only a minute long, that shouldn't take too long. Um, And several hours later, um, I put put David Tennant swearing to uh, clips of Scrooge McDuck yelling at various people, because of course, David Tennant voices Scrooge McDuck on DuckTales and uh, yeah the internet seems to enjoy it and it's been retweeted several hundred times um <laughs> so and been watched um, by by uh, by a few other people so yeah your your wife did 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 let on that you seem pretty proud of yourself so I was uh, uh... that's just a general thing though <laughs> it's got to do with DuckTales yeah it made me laugh it made me laugh and I figured oh, if it makes me it was laugh, amusing it, it was amusing funny. you you should be proud of yourself Thanks for this so once in a while the, inter- the internet is just a good thing yeah. Mm. Laugh, laughing but is most, a good thing. It is. It seems to be rather cathartic. So, um, yeah. I don't. Th- I, that's not coming to BritBox, so uh, PhotoSworth, I will not be on BritBox. <laughs> yes. So shockingly enough. Until yeah. you broker a deal for it. That's true. It is on my YouTube, uh, my, well, yeah, YouTube channel and also on my... Uh, <laughs> I on own my none of this, like but I'll take your subscribe. money. <laughs> don't forget to subscribe to the official... Radio like Free subscri- Scarl YouTube channel. Like and channel. subscribe. Click yeah. on the bell to get notified when when you when new content comes yeah, out. I love those. Yeah, we do. You know, but speaking of YouTube, actually, our fest is on YouTube now. We we always were on YouTube, but like our episodes have not been going to YouTube for like you know the better part of thirteen years. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now it's um we're on there. So if if you're one of those type of people that like just likes to open up YouTube and listen to uh, audio stuff, well, our episodes are are now there. They get uh, dropped at the the same time as uh, as our 
episodes on our feed. So if you want to play along and, and, and watch a uh, watch our generic artwork for an hour and a half as our episode plays out in the background, you can do that now hmm. at our YouTube page, youtube.com slash Radio Free Cigaro, I think it is. So there, there's is a thing. A slash you slash you, yeah, whatever. I have no idea. Google it. I, I, you know what? Actually, YouTube would... is a terrible search engine. It's just awful but to look hmm. for official things, but... Do your best. There might even be links in the show notes, actually, or links not in the show notes, but are on a website, RadioFreeScar.com. Who knows? Find out. Where are we now? We're talking, oh, we're only our second item. God, we're like almost 20 minutes into this thing. We're, this is the most important item, though. I, I know. I point out this is the most important item. It's Dolly's. VorpCon is, uh, in, in Manchester has teased this image of Jodes Doctor standing by a TARDIS. I think it's her TARDIS with the backs of uh, Ryan, uh, Graham, and Yaz looking at her all in five and a half inch proper format character yep. options action dollies warren are you excited i am getting prepared to kiss a hundred dollars goodbye yes yeah. <laughs> we'll absolutely <laughs> buy these i need these dollies the comedic potential alone for bookshelf doctors i tell you i haven't that tardis is nice too i only have the one you have, tar- you have a tardis don't you warren or no yeah, I have a couple of them, uh, but I have one on the Dolly bookshelf. This is very important. People need to know this. It is. And it's actually full of all the accessories and things that come with the uh, <laughs> with all the Dollies, because I'm like, I, this is just going to get in the way, so I just tossed them all in the TARDIS. That's what it's for. The um, handle on the little cubby for the phone is on the left-hand side. Does Jody's Ooh. TARDIS have it on the left-hand side? Oh. <laughs> oh, great. Wow. <laughs> it it begins. Good. I don't know. I, are, the, why, are the windows the right side? Are the... I... <laughs> I don't know about that. Is it? Uh, I hope they aren't. Um, maybe it's a daypool TARDIS. I don't know. Uh, with five sides. Yeah. With five sides. I'd also like to point out that just more more bookshelf doctors trivia. I have uh, the Master's Column TARDIS standing next to uh, the TARDIS, and Tom Tit is, is sitting next to that. So Tom Tit. Tom. That big recording tape machine things. That is yeah. Tom Tit. I think I, I can never remember. It is. Uh, Tom it Tit is. is. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, in we'll bookshelf just, doctor's we'll just, we'll just lore, it's a in in bookshelf doctor's lore. That's a big finish employee. That's employee number one at big finish. <laughs> that, that big tape machine. It write it writes all the scripts. Basically, is what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Is that uh, the one? Lore respons- is mostly in my head. But. Yeah. Is that the one responsible for writing? Like the, the I gave a bot an Olive Garden menu and it wrote a its own no. version. No, it is not. No. I'm just gonna nip that right in the bud. No, I don't. I don't know of that that meme, so to speak. I don't know. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's been I bad. ignore memes because memes are mostly stupid. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I uh, I hate to it. Oh, there we go. I'm I'm looking around for um for Jody Whitaker Tardis picks, and uh, yeah, sure enough, the uh, the the handle is properly placed, and the uh, the pull to open sign is also uh, Whew. Um, panic accurate. averted. So stand down, internet. All is well. All is well. We're gonna be okay. Right. Tardis is proper. So yeah, we don't know just... uh, when these uh, action dollies are coming out, but uh, I hope sometime. Relatively soon because I want to see them in bookshelf doctors, Warren. So I also want to see them in bookshelf doctors. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if they're like in the lead up to series twelve or at the launch. That of would series be 12 or that would make the most sense. Yes. Yeah, or maybe they would have come out of Comic Con. Parp. Maybe they still will at New York well, Comic Con. The, the little blurb for VorpCon just says uh, returns on eighth September. Uh, so who knows if they're putting if they're putting on their the their con then maybe they'll be announced in early September or released cool. or something. I like that. Not that I would get them, of course, because I'm trying to restrain myself. But um, also, I should point out that. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, if you got, if you had your own Toast and Cole action figure, I don't know what you would do with that. It's true. Um, Make him ride a bike. <laughs> yes. Uh, the uh, by the way, I should point out that uh, uh, here in Canada. The uh, Blu-ray set for the Colin Baker. The Colin Baker Season oh, yes. 2 Blu-ray is now officially available for pre-order. December um, 10th. Yeah, if you signed up for an alert for it, uh, you wouldn't have been notified. I imagine that that <laughs> was probably, that probably, that entry was probably deleted and the new one was created. So why would you get or, an alert for a dead entry? Or, but, or at least neither neither you nor I were, were uh, alerted. I know. the request to be so. Yeah. So December 10th was when it's, apparently it's coming out in Canada a week later than the U.S. for some odd reason, but uh, I pre-ordered it. It's like 72 bucks or something right now. It usually varies by the time the thing is released, but um, so there. And, we'll and eventually get a Blu-ray. Season 10 box set. Yeah. Although I bet you by the time we get our, uh, hell, by the time we even get our season 10 or John Pertwee season four, 
box set, the next one or two will have been announced, and we'll, mm-hmm. we're just going to be playing catch up for the rest of our lives with the UK. Possibly. Yeah. Boy, boy, oh boy. Maybe Boris Johnson can turn things around and we can have <laughs> okay. proper yeah, proper deep Blu-ray release day and date schedules again. Make I it happen. A, I think <laughs> that makes a no-deal Brexit worth it. Oh, no, yeah, I can't I even say that. top priority for, for, for him, yeah. yeah. Was, uh, was, it probably was, is top priority for him, actually. That was his campaign platform, if memory serves. It was. Speaking of uh, restraining myself from a couple minutes ago, uh, somebody on Reddit, or somebody has posted a picture on Reddit at the very least, has designed a pretty impressive uh, 13th Doctor TARDIS interior uh, with the crazy, um, you know, the big crystal light and things uh, that go up and down and things. It's it's very impressive. It is supremely impressive, and they've, they've posted a picture of it. Uh, you can look at it at the links in the show notes. Um, yeah, it's pretty good work. Very good work, I would say. Um, perhaps... Uh, the Lego people have to, um, not the Lego people, the people in the picture, but the people who actually run Lego, they need to uh, up, do an updated Doctor mm. Who Lego set, perhaps, for, for well, 2020. The, the Capaldi one is long since out of print, whatever, oh, yeah. Term, yeah. whatever term is best to use. Yeah. So finding it is is incredibly difficult and or expensive if, if you didn't get it. That's Lego. Years I ago. has I has it. Yeah, me too. Did you get one, Chris? Or no? I I waffled on it for the longest time, and then now, oh. now it's probably too late. Never waffle. Never waffle when it comes to Lego. You will regret it. Believe me. Um, What have we got next? Hey, Doctor Who Magazine's out now. I feel like this one snuck out. I feel like they, were, they did no, like no pre-press on it, and so like I get the emails. Oh, wait. This monthly schedule snuck out, yes. Well, yeah, every, every four weeks. It's not even monthly. The four weeks thing always throws me. They go, I, is it this Thursday or the next Thursday? Anyway, there's a big... Uh, big thing on Christopher Barry. Um, that's uh, that's in in the magazine. I haven't read it yet, but um, it's done. Um, it's done by Simon Garrier. It isn't mm-hmm. isn't well, mentioned here. In the, isn't mentioned here in the notes, but on on his own blog, he he put up a a piece about um, doing the interviews with Bryant and and such mm-hmm. about about Christopher Barry. Ah yes, um, and there's also the second half of a John Pertwee interview from 1977, which ties into something next week on this very podcast, by the way, about which more later, uh, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Actually, you know what, um, uh, Chris, I'm jumping up, I'm jumping up in the show notes because uh, it's Christopher Berry related. Um, this there was uh, what an an auction of uh, of rare photos from mm. Power of the Daleks. Color photos, 21 of them, that uh, were sold at an auction for almost uh, 7,000 pounds. And uh, the link's in the show notes. It's a Daily Mail link for what it's worth, just so you know. But, um, uh, boy, these are quite something. I've seen, I've seen the odd um, uh, couple shots from the production of Power of the Daleks, but none of these shots I've ever seen before. You can even see, like, a studio camera in them, in some of them with a big boom microphone over uh, over the governor's set. Um, what, what was most intriguing, and I never noticed this before, but the... Um, the machine, the big giant machine with tubes coming out of it that uh, uh, Pamela and Davy standing there in the, in the very first photo there. I don't know if you noticed that, but the thing that so you'll sort of see like the um, the diamond shaped uh, square bits with the dials on it and stuff like that with the hoses coming out of it. Do you recognize that at all? The that, diamond shaped. Take like a while to step, step the, in the dark. The so metal all, bit. All, the, all, the, all, the, all the dials and stuff, those are stickers. Those are stickers, but that exact bit of prop wound up as the head of the robot that the Sontaran links the Sun or uh, um, uh, Steyr, oh, yeah. the Sontaran had in the Sontaran experiment. That was recycled as a robot head uh, oh. some eight years after Power of the Daleks. I discovered that by looking at that just now. So that's uh, that's most intriguing. So have a look at the photos. You don't have to pay seven grand to, to look at them. That's the great thing. You can just look at them here on the... On well, the, the seven, the seven grand notes. also included like the negatives and whatnot. So, we're just going to look at them on the internet. So, <laughs> thanks. I like the combative tone you're just taking there for no reason. Yeah, so, I know. Seven grand for photos. That's a lot. Yeah. Right. Well, one of the things that the article points out, there's actually a lot of, a lot of, um, there's a lot of in the, 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 the body, like the, the body of text mm-hmm. that goes with it. But just uh, one of the things that I called out was just like the, 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 the vibrancy 
of some of the sets and costumes and all that, despite the fact it's a black and white production and the yeah. hue is never going to get transmitted in color and all that kind of stuff. And, and yeah, it's, it's, um, some work that was put into it. Yeah. But it stands out, you know, you have to make it stand out amongst all the other gray tones when you're shooting in black and white. So it's, mm-hmm. uh, it's fascinating to see what colors they choose and how they will look when it's black and white. You know, the TARDIS set was famously like a, like a, a sort of a gray, um, as it wanted to show up white, but it would gleam too much if it was white. So, um, yeah, you know, very fascinating. Also, there's a yeah. shot of, uh, of, uh, Trout in there with the, uh, stovepipe, uh, hat there looking at a thing from behind, from yeah. behind there. Yeah. Yeah. And then or just side note, Christopher Mary miniscope, radio free scar number 632 and 633 from April of last year. Wow. Look at that. It took us that long to get to Christopher Barry. Well, and there's five minutes more we talked about him, or obliquely around there, but things about him, basically, <laughs> kind of. But um, uh, let's move on to some big finish news. How about uh, the fourth Doctor, as played by Tom Baker? Uh, he is um, he's coming back for two new audio drama series from Big Finish coming in 2022 and 2023. As I've said before, they, they plan Big Finish releases out uh, further in advance than they plan Olympic Games. Um, or the Marvel films. Or the Marvel, indeed, or the Marvel films. Uh, joining him in this is Neris Hughes as a new companion, uh, Margaret Hopwood. I, th- I think this is genius because Tom Baker and older lady companions, as we saw w- during his time on screen, is a is a brilliant mix, hmm. um, so I think this will be this will be quite something. Yeah, I, or old, I, old, older lady characters anyway. You're talking like Amelia Ducat, and you're talking yeah. like um, uh, what's her name from Stones of Blood, and yeah, I can't think of her name. I blanked on her name. Oh God, yeah, sort of, sort of I. Oh, Amelia so I, Rumford. Amelia Rumford. Yeah, Amelia Rumford. Yeah, Rumford. Yeah. Yes. For once, I was the one. This is not going to happen again. Yeah. Cherish this moment. I know. <laughs> So that's good. Uh, there's uh, four stories in volume one and then volume two, series 12. <laughs> Goodness me, series 12 of Tom Baker Audios uh, has five stories, including one by Chris Chapman, who is, uh, who's, of course, done a lot of um, uh, Blu-ray extras and stuff like that. And now he's, uh, he's written a, a big finish audio as well. So so good for him. So, so there, those will come out in several I years' like, time. I, I don't recognize his name, but it's like the, the guy who writes the first one. Timothy X attack. That is, that seems the made up. That's a good name. It can't be a possible name. That's ridiculous. <laughs> X attack. Many an X would disagree with you being attacked as I was. That's true. So uh, he has the tagline X going to give to you. Nope. I don't get that. Nope. Reference. I not one. Is that, is that about kids and their music? I don't. Uh, yeah, DMX. Sorry, as I drink my coffee. DMX. <laughs> DMX is irrelevant. Please keep him so. Mm-hmm. I thought that was BMX, but that's fine. BMX also irrelevant. It is actually, yeah. Uh, in other uh, big finish news, this comes with a slight caveat. Uh, Psychic Circus is coming out uh, in February of 2020. It's it's both a prequel to and a sequel to The Greatest Show in the Galaxy, written by Stephen uh, Wyatt, featuring Chris Jury, who played Deadbeat, and uh, Ian Rich- Red- Reddington, rather, who was the uh, Kingpin, rather. Uh, but he was he ended up as Kingpin, but maybe he'll be dead. No, he'll be Kingpin here. I bet too. Uh, and Kingpin here. Yeah. also, uh, Ian Reddington is a chief crown- clown. Uh, there's some controversy about the, the main casting decision, which is James Dreyfus, who, uh, who's, whose uh, attitudes and opinions of trans people sort of align himself with Gareth Roberts, who we talked about a few weeks back. So it it, uh, it led to some internet discomfort and uh, led to also to Big Finish putting out a statement on equality and diversity uh, at Big Finish, probably in response to that. So that's a thing that's happening, but we tell you about it anyway because uh, it's coming in 2020. So, and it's written by Stephen. Given my Wyatt thoughts on and, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, given my thoughts on Great Show and the Galaxy to begin with, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm not listening to this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. Uh, and also coming uh, for Big Finish is uh, is two short trips. Uh, with um, uh, blah blah blah. I've, I'm at the end of my news list, and I've I've lost. Track. They you say two short trips, and I look at there's like four different artworks, so I'm confused, Chris. Which uh, but it's but it's two twice the same two, two twice two what the same two twice. Infinite today by Sharon Bidwell and narrated by uh, Katie Manning is coming out in 2020. That uh, that features the uh, Joe Grant and the Eleventh Doctor. Um, 
as uh, and there's also the uh bah, 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 the other one that I'm looking at which is regeneration impossible which is being done by Jacob Dubman who does of course impersonations of the 11th and 12th doctors so it's basically him just sort of doing his bits as a big finisher those are two very different voices to jump between that so is if he can pull it off more power to him yeah no he's he's uh, Dudman's usually done the uh, 10th and 11th but I, I haven't heard the 12th so we'll see what that sounds like in um early next year when it comes out but there you go lots of big finish stuff once again the most productive uh audio production company in history is big yes. finish yeah <laughs> just ahead of us sure yeah just ahead of us in our 699 episodes um of which this one rolls merrily along uh, after the very short break uh we'll get to our our our, our main event today which of course is fluid links this episode, once again, is brought to you by BBC Audio, the publishers of hundreds, hundreds, guys, of Doctor Who audiobooks and with two releases, two new releases every month. Uh, every audiobook is performed by an actor closely involved with the series, like Tom Baker and David Tennant, or Nicholas Briggs and John Colshaw, who we established last week are not iconic at all, or at least certainly not fan favorites. Um... And uh, we'll 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 tell you about like there's a whole bunch of stuff like uh, like Doctor Who at the BBC Volume Nine Happy Anniversary and the Enemy in the World. But Warren, you've been you've been listening to um, the uh, Tom Baker reading his own novel Scratch yes. Man. The start of it, anyway. And uh, two things leapt to mind: a, I'll listen to Tom Baker reading anything, frankly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this, this voice is magnificent. It's, that's not news to anybody. Uh, and also, I don't know if Tom Baker or James Goss or who is responsible for it, but there's some magnificent verbiage at the very beginning where he's meeting with some Time Lords and telling them off. Wonderful. That's wonderful. Yes. I can hear Tom Baker. I, I've even I've even seen him read snippets of it on on the um, on the official website, and it's just yeah, Tom B- Baker reading his own his own work is something to behold. He is a treasure, that man, and he's written a book, and you can hear it uh, thanks to BBC Audio. So, um, Click the link in the show notes to uh, find out all the other uh, releases from BBC Audio. We thank them for their support of Radio Free Scarrow. But now, it's time to play Fluid Links. Do you know what this is? Fluid Link K57. Ah, yes, of course, the Fluid Link. What's a Fluid Link? No idea. Yes, Fluid Links, questions and comments submitted by you, the listener, just in case you didn't listen at the beginning of the show and you just jump straight to this part of the show and wonder what the hell we were talking about. This is it. Uh, so uh, here we go, everyone. It is our first Fluid Link. And it's this. Hey, Radio Free Scarrow, I got a question for Fluid Links. Uh, Let's say the worst has happened and we have missing episodes throughout all of Classic Who's history. Which stories do you think would be the best animated episodes and which do you think would lose the most in translation? That's from Jeremy Renick, who Jeremy mm. Renick is from, uh, of course, from Doctor Who TV movie and appeared on the most recent episode of uh, New to Who podcast, uh, Jeremy Renick. So uh, there you go. All the all of them are gone. All the I wonder if like all like missing episodes through all of like all twenty six years. Wow, which one would you animate, man? So mm. which would which would be best uh, suited and which would be least? Yeah, which would be well the best suited? suited? Kinda and Snake Dance would be good for animation because they're weird and psychedelic to begin with, Ooh. or Castro Volva kind of at the end parts maybe. Ooh. I'm just trying to think of like all the, 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 you know, black set Tegan on her own kind of stuff from Snake Dance. And that could, yeah, you could do like some Done properly, you could do some, you could do some cool stuff with, stuff with it. Yeah. What's that, Warren? Genesis, Genesis of Daleks springs to mind. I'm not sure why, because it's not like it's no, unimpressive. No. Well, I guess it is kind of unimpressive visually, but, but just for a good clam. But then that takes away from the clam, so. <laughs> That's true. Uh, um, yeah, boy, kid. Yeah, Kinda. I feel like the ones that like, uh, like maybe didn't quite work as well visually might be the ones like I don't time flight. Oh, time flight. Not a bad story. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's, maybe, like, you know? it's still kind of a dumb story. <laughs> like if you took if you took like the plasmatons from that, or if mm-hmm. you took Chronos from the Time Monster, or oh, yeah. uh, Arado from Creature from the Pit. Oh, Arado. Um, Stuff like that that just did not work with practical. What about power of crawl? Costumes and effects and, yeah. and CSO and whatever. Yeah, mm-hmm. power of crawl maybe. Yeah, actually, power of crawl is fine except for like the last few minutes with the crawl split screen thing going on. 
Mm-hmm. It's good otherwise for for production. I think uh, Happiness Patrol would have been because you know on, honestly, I, good, I think good or bad. Good. I think I think there's a okay. there's a there's a few of those McCoy episodes that I feel would work with the outlandishness of animation and yes. artwork. I was actually going to say the exact same thing. McCoy stuff is surreal enough to begin with. Yeah. Also, secondarily. They would be missing episodes, so I am also for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. Uh, what about ones that you think would go? Oh wow, that doesn't really come together at all. Um, five Doctors. That would be tough. Know. Yeah, what would it? be the point? I don't know if the Five Doctors could work as animation. Uh, obviously, there are some things that you could do better, like the the inserts they did from Shada, for example. Yeah. Um, but but beyond that, I mean, just the 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 number of. It's it's okay to sit down and watch like an animated recon of like Reign of Terror or something where you've got just a couple, you know, main cast members and the rest you don't care about so much. But when you have so many companions and so many doctors and mm-hmm. all these people whose whose appearance and whatever you know so well and they have to be stylized in a certain manner for animation and things like that. Yeah, three to uh, five doctors I don't think would work. Yeah, trial of the time lord because I'll accept sitting down sequences with people, especially from a British source because that's what they're good at. Mm-hmm. But not animation. No, I, think three, I, had, I, I think, guess it's a missing episode, so I guess I would have to. But yeah, I think three doctors would work well in animation. Just That's thinking, true. Thinking of multi doctor right. stories because you could do you could do more with the first doctor. Uh-huh. All the bland sets for Omega's palace, you could do a lot more. The gel guards, you could do a lot more. Oh, Omega, you, you can't top you could the do gel a lot guards. more. You can't top the gel guards. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to stop yes, you, you can. right there. Yes, you can. They're terrible. Um, yeah, they are delightful, terrible. Delightful. Um, terrible. And think of like the visual visual effects of like people getting transported in, in three doctors. So you could do a lot better there. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd say the Sea Devils because yeah. it's pretty drab down in the depths. Maybe it is a bit. Anyway, there's lots of possibilities there if they just want to keep animating them for the sake of animating them. Um, I think they could have a a pretty you know when they release the um, the new Blu-ray sets and they're just animated in 17K. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> well, I mean, when you just hit a button to make them animated, mm-hmm. as as was brought up last week uh, with Rob Ritchie, he's he's uh, uh, redoing the visual effects for 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 Terror of the Vervoids. Yeah, May, maybe it's gonna all be animated. May oh, that would work because that goes back to the outlandishness of uh, of um, Happiness Patrol in a way. Yeah, yeah. Thinking you do it. Uh, all right, um, there you go. Lots of stuff to animate. Some good, some bad. Remit fulfilled. Next food link. Um, Bill Filer, unit operative. God, I wish it was a real one. Uh, Rasmus Ormstrup. Who says it isn't? Uh, it's good, good to be. He's, under, he's under, obviously under an assumed name as Rasmus Ormstrup on Twitter. Uh, asked this, which TARDIS function first introduced in the classic era a la fluid links would you have reintroduced in the next series of Doctor Who? What was introduced hmm. in the classic series that hasn't been so fluid audio fluid, on the speaker? Fluid links we <laughs> yeah. got. Uh, yeah, we got fluid link in um, um, oxygen. Yeah, we got the hads in the hads. in Cold War. We don't have the uh, Are mercury links. The same thing as yeah. fluid links. Co- yes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. What about mercury, the um, mercury? Was the fluid in the link? Uh, we haven't had a fault locator yet, have we? <clears throat> no. Like a big giant screen that's the Susan random has randomizer. To, the food ra- oh, food the random machine. Way. Food. I was thinking of the food machine from the Daleks. Yeah, that would be time. Good. It's not really part of the, the the TARDIS as such, but time space visualizer. Uh, <laughs> where is that thing? That's got to be back there somewhere. Like it's it it is. I I think that has been, you know, probably down to an app now. Like uh, basically on a smartphone. Like it is a giant thing. I, I probably don't need to lug this thing around anymore. No, no. Um, there, there are two right answers here: the coat stand and um, the cocktail table from Five Doctors. They've oh definitely like the uh, the cold coalition that uh, Tegan and and Turlo bring out for uh, Richard Herndl to to <clears throat> mash up yeah um, they've had a hat stand about, they had a hat stand ooh. in uh, Tenant Stardust how about how about, right, how, about um, how about Adric's room <laughs> still there <laughs> long since it's ejected still there. they find it's, it in space and Adric possesses it's, skeleton it's, it's a it. shrine it, it 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 didn't get jettisoned in in Castro Valva or anything like that. Well, because it didn't. Well, um, um, uh, well, I will point out, actually, before you go on, that, that Tegan said, here, Turlo, in Terminus, take Adric's room. He's dead. You could take that. 
So I don't know if it is a shrine. I think Turlo defiled that room. I don't think that's wow. an Adric's room to have left. I think he did some pretty. I think Adric is a teenage boy. He he that room came pre defiled. <laughs> Just saying. yeah, bit of a stink to it. But then there's Turlo. You know he's thrashing about with the uh, Black Guardian thing. Don't get out. Get out. Get dirty thoughts out of your he head. He was out. he was playing. He was he was. And nobody changes their clothes. So he's no. pretending oh, to be yeah. a schoolboy. So. Yeah. Nobody changes their clothes. God, no. Oh, God. Jettis in all the rooms from T- the 80s. Tegan has, Tegan has a few outfits. Ramana has a few outfits. R- Tegan had like three outfits. Yeah, that's a few. Have them open Have have them open a door and out come all the old outfits. They just kind of come spilling out and they just push them right back in and go out the story. Actually, uh, um, wardrobe room, which we've had. Like we had the crazy one, the crazy shot in the Christmas invasion where it's like a big spiral yeah. staircase and stuff. And that's all. That's all we get. I kind of, I kind of want to see the wardrobe room again because we've had various different incarnations of that over the years. We had the TARDIS library, which seemed a lot smaller than I thought it would, mm-hmm. uh, in somewhere in Capaldi's run. Yeah, uh, it was in um, um, Journey, Journey of the Center. Yeah. Journey of the TARDIS. Oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. Pool with Venus flytrap. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> That's a given. With the Santarin still With the Santarin still in there. Yeah. 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 The arms just kind of hang in there, all gross, mm-hmm. skeleton-y. Yeah. I like the food machine. That's uh, that's a good one. But then, you know, really, it's it's just like any vending machine now, you know? That's but, that's a great the, thing about... But uh-huh. the first bite tastes like bacon, and the second <laughs> bite tastes like eggs. So basically, uh, lots of things to do in the TARDIS. I, I like, find the, it fa- like the answer to the animated thing is there's lots of things. Lots of things. I find it fascinating actually like some of the stuff that uh, that was seen you know, like ooh a food machine wow and you know that it's like we have vending machines now more or less and so can we, we, know. can we just have broken glasses of water all over the place? Yes and scissors lying around to stab couches with. That and, needs and, to be a thing. And curvy, curvy chair, daybed sort of I love things. Love curvy chairs, yeah. And they already have a food machine that makes cookies. It, That's all it makes, it makes. But it is a food machine. Yeah, it makes precisely one biscuit. Yeah. And don't forget that River has a stash of booze in the TARDIS. Mm-hmm. That, oh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that the Doctor Who doesn't know about. So. Yeah, maybe we should, actually we should put the boo. Maybe we shouldn't put the booze trolley back in the classic series because. John Pert, we would never leave the TARDIS at that point. He's like, where's the doctor? He's not in the laboratory. <laughs> ah, <laughs> sipping wine again, talking about Napoleon. All right, next fluid link. It's this from Richard Smith. Richard 1J1 Smith. Uh, it's this. He's from Planet... Um, it's from the uh, bu- 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 Planet Mondas podcast. Uh, it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. As podcasters... Is the excitement of a new series of Doctor Who ever tempered by the sheer logistical terror of trying to get a timely review out? Is getting an episode out always worth the pain? Well, well we, we had last series, yeah. We yeah. had many, many consternations for, with series eleven for its series broadcast 11. schedule. So that was tough. Yeah, that was tough. Yeah, yeah. I, I have to, you know, we're. Uh, b- you know, peeking behind the curtain a little bit here as well, kids. Uh, we're we're recording our commentaries for for series eleven to come out later this year. Right now, we've done two. I think by the time you hear this, we'll <laughs> maybe we've done a third one. Actually, we're doing one later today, um, and I'm actually enjoying that. I'm actually enjoying just watching the episode again and uh, without having to think. Okay, I have to think about what to say because I'm only going to get to watch this once, and then we got to record pretty quick after this. So yeah, uh, series eleven thanks to that Sunday thing was. Um, hell, and you know what? It, that, it wasn't easy. It yeah. wasn't easy, and it's it's not like the the previous seasons were always like a peach either. Like sometimes we weren't able to record on Sunday mornings like we always wanted to, and so we'd have to cram in a uh, a Saturday night uh, recording or something like that late in in the day, and mm-hmm. uh, so that was kind of tough. And Christmas Day, oh, don't get me started on Christmas Day having to do that dance every single year either. I don't know. Yeah, that what was you, easier for New Year's this this past time. Yes, that was. Keep sure. the New Year's thing. Kind Just of de- for me. Kind of depressingly easier. You know what I mean? And we still, like, we still adhered to, like, let's get it out the day of. Like, we didn't wait to the next day, I don't think. I think we just kept going and says, let's just put it out because we already did that for the previous 10 episodes, so we might as well do it for this one. And, you know, it felt, uh, it felt very strange. So, yeah, the, I, I remember I'm looking forward to recording the, the Kerblam commentary. Because that was the one episode which I think we had to record. It was the busiest day ever. There were several different uh, things in play. 
And I remember just sort of watching that, almost running out the door, and then having to go do something, and then having to come back and record RFS, and having to quickly put it out. Like I don't remember anything about that episode at all. Um, so that that's mm. that's one that I think sort of fell. It's about domestic story. terrorism. <laughs> that's exactly what it is, and Amazon, and how great it mm-hmm. can be, and everything else like that. And and, and the the uh, the fake woman thing that the guy fall, falls for. Oh yeah, something like that. I don't. Oh, sure, I guess. Boy, I'd, I would fail. And the Kerbl- and the Kerbl- and the Kerblam men, which were fairly heavily cosplayed at Galley and elsewhere, I gather. That's right. Well, they're they're well, they look pretty cool. Yeah, they're very cosplayable. So, um, but to, you know, to get back to the original, yes, it is worth it because it's fun. It's fun to do a podcast about it, and I I can't imagine like <laughs> it, it's odd to think that we've ever oh like um you know we've done this podcast since two thousand six. Um, we've the only two series we didn't do basically were, were one and two, like live reviews, so to speak. We, we started yeah, doing Because you guys started reviews. just after series two. Yeah, just series two. So it feels weird to like watch Doctor Who and not <laughs> do a podcast about it. Uh, so and I wouldn't there, know else there is, There's a sort of like, like when, with, with all the, the uh, scram, like specifically series 11, with all the, the scrambling around and, 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 weird timetables and all that kind of stuff there's uh-huh. there's both a sense of like relief and and a bit of euphoria once you actually get the tracks laid down and get it out so yeah that's that can be a good little you know tiny little dopamine hit after the fact there's a little bit of a buzz to it especially when you're recording the first episode of a season you know you sort of like okay getting back into this you know hey new new doctor new era that was kind of fun and everything that was quickly mm. get it out it's uh yeah it's all worth it. Isn't it worth it, listeners? Hope it's worth it. Anyway, next wood lake. <laughs> uh, John or Holler, John Hole asks, if there was a Doctor Who land, like the Star Wars one, like Galaxy's Edge, I guess, now it's, now it's out. I think this was written before it was even uh, named um, at Disneyland. Uh, what rides would you like? Doctor Who rides. Basically, in a theme park. room. I, 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 th- room. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think in order to pay tribute to the, uh, let's say, homey nature of the old show, there should yeah. just be a crappy tent that does great show in the galaxy stuff. <laughs> That's the key to the whole thing, right? <laughs> with with death at the end of it, or uh, with yeah, you know. exactly. Um, I think there should be a blue screen somewhere, and then a yellow screen as well, and then maybe later mm-hmm. on a green screen. I think you just sort of play around. There should. There should be, um, like, a selection of, of models and hand puppets you can play with. Like, you know, play with your own Drash Egg or, or your own Kroll or... A ride based on a conveyor belt and Power of the Daleks. Uh, <laughs> so you get through the Dalek factory. <laughs> or, or just any Dalek factory. It doesn't yeah. have to be tied to the show. Uh, you nearly killed Grizz with that one. Um, yeah. How, how, how about a ride based on the floor at the end of episode three of Death of the Daleks? Oh yeah, you just don't, how about I, a room, an escape room that has the electrified floor from Revenge of the Cybermen? Escape room from or escape es- escape room from End of Pyramids of Mars or, or Death, Death of the, of the Daleks. Daleks, which is oh, the same thing. Same thing. Um, that would be great, actually. Oh my god, a Doctor Who escape room with that? I mean, I know they already have Doctor Who escape rooms, but uh, the classic Doctor Who escape. We're notice how we're like leaning heavily into classic Doctor Who at this point. <laughs> I think you could do um, a whole pirate planet thing with like the uh, linear induction corridor or something like that. Like you uh, and uh, and the and the air cars as well. Uh, that'd mm-hmm. be a ride. The air car just goes straight up to this castle and straight back down in what was some sort of fashion. Like, what are like some sort of like dimensional breach thing, like from Nightmare of Eden? <laughs> how about how about that, um, how about a midnight ride where you basically just go on and lose your sanity? Uh, and also, uh, <laughs> if you're gonna have like mascots walking around this park, you uh-huh. have to have the giant robot. Oh, obviously, just going. Uh-huh. <laughs> you have to avoid yeah. him. Yeah, like and the giant. Yeah, and. And Arado. I think I, I there think will be no Arado I think there needs to be a lot a lot of corridors in this uh in this theme park, right? I don't, we have, oh I, no no, I've got a great idea for ride. The Fort of Doomsday cricket uh, oh, space ride. Oh my god, yes. The Fort of Doomsday <laughs> cricket ride and maybe a bouncy castle that looks like the Matrix from the Arkham Infinity as well. And, and a cricket pitch to pay tribute to Black Orc. A ride based yeah. on the Deadly Assassin Matrix, that'd be rad. That would be Well that, really that could be one of the escape room type things. That's true. There'd be so right. many escape rooms. Can't think of any rides, oddly enough. Perhaps because Doctor Who has had so how many about the, convincing ones. Going back to the prior fluid link, how about the curvy chair daybed ride? 
It's that's for the whoa, parents where you just whoa, relax whoa. after. How about how about like Pirates of the Caribbean, but it's the Sand Miner from Robots of Death. Oh, oh my God, the Sand Miner ride. That would be so awesome. That's that's basically the idea. With Pamela you Salem get, lookalikes, because yeah. you know, I'm, to, I'm making this thing, be, I'm making it right. Do you have to be stuck in a hopper and have like have stuff dumped oh, yeah. on you? Uh, yes. Well, well you do. beautiful but deadly droids look at you. Uh, is there any is there any modern series rides that we can think of here? Like well, I mean, mid, the midnight the, one was probably good. are, but like I'm yeah, that one. good. Um, um, how about how about just a collection of of junk and you build your own thing like in the lodger that the doctor built in the bedroom, or that dumb bus from from uh, what's my call? Planet of the Dead. <laughs> Planet of the Dead. Yeah, that's a ride. I yeah. think maybe ooh, I ooh, 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 no yeah. no no. So you know how like there's those places that have like the penny squishing machine and it'll do an imprint. Yeah. You have the bus squishing machine. Oh, what about the bus from <laughs> Greatest Show in the Galaxy too? You could squish that. You could too. also do a uh, a ride that uh, that is both the sleigh ride from um, Christmas Carol and from Last Christmas. You could pass between the two of them, and you could see other riders in each ride. It's like Christmas mm. land. I, it looks kind of like the carousel or something. Also, um, essentially, yeah. Uh, what you call? Oh, how about how about how about how about the the ill fitted plane ride from Doctor Widow Wardrobe? Just put people in a miniscope. There you go. Problem solved. They've already done this in the show. They have done this in the show. Uh, is Dalek bumper cars too obvious? That seems to be like yes. That sounds but that's fun, something though. we can't do. That, that sounds fun. Do. That would be the way. I would to do go. that. That's I'm what totally they are. That. How about the Santaran experiment where you participate in the experiment? <laughs> <laughs> Torture all, as a theme park. Well, it's, and, and, and they're all. Uh, it's, and, it's like a tough mutter kind of a deal. Yeah. And for some and for some reason, all the people getting tortured are South African. Um, uh, ooh. That's a commentary. Oh, man, new series stuff. Yeah. New series stuff. Yeah, What's yeah. What, okay? Well, we got to think of something from series eleven. All right. What what, uh, what can we do for series? Coast 11? monument. <laughs> you have to run through the desert of South Africa uh, to get to the TARDIS, and then it disappears. There you go. Okay. Fun, fun for all the family. How about how about how about how about massive deaths of what used to be your countrymen, like in Demons of the Punjab? That's that's awesome. a terrible idea. You're that's awful. Great. Wow. Doctor. God. Doctor. Who's depressing? Man, alive. <laughs> Why do we watch uh, this show? Like Chris is depressing. Yeah. That's like we've we've invented a torture camp as a theme park. <laughs> the resolution Dalek chasing you. And it's all run by ride. Tim Shaw. It is run by Tim Shaw, the pr- proprietor of the Doctor Who theme park. Or of or. Death. Or to talk about Kerblam and, and, and the Amazon parallel there, you All can right. just go around delivering packages. <laughs> or you could just work at the warehouse or something for a Yeah, business. you could be a picker. Basically, you're picker working for Disney Kerblam at this warehouse. point. Yeah. Wow. You're, 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 not, not only are you unpaid labor, you're paying to get in to be the unpaid labor. Here's, here's what you do. Right. You do the deepest, stupidest cut ever. You make the nightmare fair. <laughs> That's true. Black no, hole, no, but go, torture. Go, go, f- go f- Go further and right. and um, yellow fever and have a cure it. No, that, don't that go wasn't further. even finished. Please redact writing. that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Anyway, uh, this is a fine time to remind you that there is a Doctor Who theme park probably opening in twenty twenty one. BBC Worldwide, you are allowed to take some of our uh, uh, ideas. For, <laughs> Please yeah, do. For, They're all terrible, nom- so free, for feel a free to take them. Fee. Yeah. All right. Next fluid link. This is an action dolly one here, Warren. Stand by. All right. Uh, Jason I. Harmon playing Dr. Nine. I wonder if he's a Christopher Eccleston cosplayer. Uh, He asks, what does a completionist set of Dr. Action Dollies have to have, i.e. the curator, watcher, Valiard, which... What do you have to have if you're going to say, yes, this is uh, it. This is my complete oh, set. The Watcher would be cool. I already have the Curator, um, yeah. but I would love to have the Watcher and the Valiard. The Valiard would be a trial of the Time Lord set oh, with the, like them sitting in their little yeah. things would be great. Mm-hmm. Are, you, right. are we talking just Doctor-based stuff? Doctor Who. Doctor Who, I think. Yeah, I think I probably... So what you do is you do a not-to-scale space station and then attached to it is like the little sitting play set. Although, yeah, is although it, maybe that is actually Doctor Action Dollies, yeah, because the Curator, Watcher, Valley yeah, are, are all, yeah, all that's the, right. the Doctor, yeah. Because I was thinking you could have like a slightly off first Doctor. That's your Edmund Warren. <laughs> you could, you have, could have, have you could have you could have a slightly swarthy second Doctor. That's yeah. your Salamander. Uh huh. Or okay. or the 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 uh, limited release of 
Patrick Troughton in blackface like you wanted to do it originally. No, absolutely not. You are very problematic okay. today. This is really this is, this is bad news, even for you, Chris. Uh, no, I, I I think you're on the right track of the Evan Warwick thing. I think Doctor Doubles. I think, but actual and, doubles. Like, oh, I want I wanted a veteran space and time play set with all the with all like the BBC accoutrement the, to like the control panel. I wore a Warris Hussein action figure, a very elaborate action figure. Pow pow pow! Oh, that'd be great. The the uh, the Richard Herndl mm-hmm. uh, variant of the first Doctor. Has to, have a second, has to have a second costume like he's dressed in his Blake 7 appearance. Uh, no, I think you need to put a first Doctor set together with Edmund Warwick, William Hartnell, uh, Richard Herndl, David Bradley, all, of course, at varying who's, heights and stuff. Who's, who's, Peter what's Cushing. The, what's, the name, Peter so what's the name of the guy who doubled for the first Doctor like from behind in that first filmed sequence? From oh, Rain, and Rain of, of Terror. Terror. Brian somebody. I can't remember his name. Yeah, but obviously him. You need, you need that one too. Yeah. Where's here? Where's my Love and Monsters action figures? Come on! I mean, <laughs> like, we we've already that. we've already got the black and white first and second doctors do. and the the color first and second doctors. So that's mm-hmm. a start. Uh, I think it's Sylvester McCoy. I'm a little fixated on the first and second doctors. So Sylvester McCoy in uh, Paula Baker wig action figure Ooh, would be the way to go. Um, sixth Doctor with Matilda hat. Was it Matilda? No, Esmeralda. whatever he called it. Esmeralda, Esmeralda. with with you know, so six doctor with like like um, chancery guard outfit mm-hmm. and and the Esmeralda hat. Yeah, um, I think maybe John Pertwee in shower sequence action figure from Spirit <laughs> of Space with shoes. Don't forget yeah. his shoes. Just shoes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, transparent Dalek from Revelation. Uh, I think you need talking doctors. Need, stay on target here, Warren. Uh, we're you need you need all you need all the doctors. That had a different doctor's outfit, so not just Sylvester McCoy and Colin Baker wig, but you need mm-hmm. like, like uh, the Jody Whittaker doctor in the Capaldi outfit. You need the Capaldi yeah. doctor in the Matt Smith outfit. Well, the Matt those, Smith doctor those in always seem outfit. those always seem to come out eventually. You know, the, yeah. later down the and line, and there is a Mr. Clever Matt Smith one, isn't there? I think there is. Uh, possibly, there's a Funko Pop of Mr. Clever. I don't know if there there's is. a. I don't know if there is an action doll figure. Mm-hmm. I mean, this isn't a Doctor's Tardis, but is there an Idris figure? That'd be pretty rad if there was. Uh, I don't know. There should be. There should be, really, shouldn't there? Hmm. Yeah. But the Watcher would be good. I think that'd be kind of fun. The Watcher would be good. Yeah. yeah. I think that'd be all right. Uh, ditto the Valyard, yeah. I'm still disappointed that we don't have a Varden action figure, though, but I suppose you could probably make that on your own. <laughs> you could easily yeah. make that. In fact, that should be a bookshelf document. Wire cone hanger. Why? And why yeah, get a co- co- Warren, this is, I'm writing your stuff here. Come on, let's. Let's make it happen. <laughs> okay. Yes. I put these things out every day, but you're writing my stuff. You, That's you, fair. You could put like a Fisher Price guy under there, under there and it'll be. You don't, you could, I've already had a Fisher Price guy. I have my TV Fisher Price guy I for the know. adventure people. I know. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You need, you need, um, uh, you need a sequence of John Pertwee ones as right. the Buffon gets bigger and bigger. Oh, yes. Replaceable heads or, or just actual. Um, yeah, we, no, do need, we do need a replaceable on, head for Full on Capaldi. different action figures. Yeah. Uh-huh. Actually, the replaceable head thing. get the red velvet coat. The replaceable yes. head thing would work better for the whole, you know, doctor or whatever in the prior doctor's outfit after regeneration. That'd be yeah. easier. Uh huh. Probably. Like they're putting out a a war eighth doctor ish war adjacent eighth doctor one, so that's that's covered now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 David Bradley from the Unbound series as a doctor. There you go. Audio doctors. They're well, doing BF ones too. So they yeah. are putting out David audio Bradley doctors. or David Warner. Oh, sorry. Yeah, David Warner. David right. Warner. A lot of Davids. Too many Davids playing. Uh, um, all players. the different people who show up in Brain of Morbius. Yeah. Oh, you need, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta have your, you gotta have your, your Graham, your Graham Harper action and figure. Hinchcliffe. But you don't you know, actually have to have the action, action figure. figure. Yeah. yeah. You just have their like, their like d- device, and then have little sort of card inserts you could put for those guys. Yeah. So the question was, uh, what would be you know your definitive one? We named like a hundred. A hundred. So yep. obviously, the, <laughs> and they're all definitive. The completionist, I, and I heard Warren mentioned it under uh, under us talking, but obviously the Peter Cushing one as well. So, um, yeah, yeah, you'll never stop. You will never. Although stop. Villiard might be my white whale, uh, possibly. That'd be fun. They should have a Valyard. You can have, a, you could you could even have a sequence of Peter Davison ones as his hairline recedes over the years. That's true, actually. The camp. I want Linda Bellingham in Dolly form. Damn it! Come on. I know. R.I.P. Next food link. Uh, oh, good. Well, let's get political, folks. Um, is uh, Return to Peladon due 
given the political shenanigans currently going on in Blighty. Uh, Given the collective apoplectic aneurysm this could give the Daily Mail readership, this is a must for Series 12. That's from Ged Sweeney. At Sweeney get I can't disagree with anything that's been said there at all. I love make, I love how make I love Peladon great again. I love how the Peladon stories have become this like barometer. Like, oh wow, if something happens in current day politics, we have to do an episode well, of could, Doctor Who about it, and we have to set it on Peladon. To, given, yeah, there are many, many other places you could do this with. It, mm-hmm. It's it's super duper obvious, of course. But I mean, yeah. given Chris of Peladon was about them joining the Federation, the updated Peladon one could be them leaving the Federation and the the struggles faced in doing that. Yeah. And Agador leading the just back as long as the, uh, as, 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 as just as long as the cat, the, um, cast of irregulars shows back up again, like Alpha Centauri and what's his name with the dome who I love so much. Arcturus. Like, Arcturus. He dies. D- thank you. Arcturus. Yeah. He dies Arcturus as Peladon. Boris Johnson. Uh-huh. Just put a bad wig on him. David Troughton comes back to life as uh, King Peladon. Um, cause apparently he died, uh, by the time monster Peladon comes along, but it doesn't matter cause we could do it after who knows. Um, yeah, we should uh, <laughs> totally do Brexit as Peladon story with the Ice Warriors. The Ice Warriors are obviously like the uh, the Putin Putin um, infiltrators and stuff, like uh, yep. mucking things up, um, Cambridge Analytics and all that sort of thing. Um, if we want to get really heavy, <laughs> that's handed. that's what's his name. Yeah, uh, and just and just like Brexit, mm-hmm. it's all on a cheap set, a cheap set with a shabby result. <laughs> <laughs> Can yeah, I, can I, I can Agador be Jacob Rees Mogg? Uh, n- no, that is Arcturus. Jacob Rees Mogg is yeah, Arcturus. Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah, very, 100%. very snooty for no particularly good reason yeah. and a very high opinion of himself. Like, like and, and kind of a parody of a monster. That's uh, de- definitely Jacob Rees Mogg. Yeah. Um, uh, well, Larry, I guess we wrote it. Um, so I know you're in the midst of what well, you right now, you're not doing anything doctor who, cause you took time off to go to Comic-Con. So rewrite an episode that's upcoming to include our Brexit of Peladon, um, story and, uh, and be ready by rewriting. We mean throwing three ideas at them <laughs> now, now do the rest of the actual yeah, work. That's enough. That's how writer's rooms work. Warren, you just throw ideas and then that's they exactly it. Yes. That is a hundred percent how they happen. And then the actors make up the rest because they're geniuses. They do. They just ad lib. It's all ad libbed, folks. You have no idea how much yeah. is ad libbed on TV. They don't even have a script. Everyone assumes they have a script. Now, here's they how books get written. They don't. They Red, don't. Writers don't. Writers don't actually exist. Come on. Yeah. No. Ri- books get written when somebody comes up to a writer and says, "I have an idea," and then it just magically appears. Yeah. It does. All right. Uh, speaking of magical appearing, the next fluid link. Dalhart Cloud Cloud Chasing uh, Marshall G Music asks if you were tasked with making a movie trilogy like Star Wars Star Wars is a movie trilogy there's three of them in fact um, that told the life story of one of the Doctor's incarnations which existing stories would you use or combine for the three movies and who would play that Doctor wow that's a that's a high concept one yeah so basically the life of a Doctor Told across three movies, but using existing stories as that. They almost mm-hmm. did that in as uh, you know William Hartnell really in the two Dalek movies, and they would have made a third if they they didn't yeah. uh, tank. But I think this lends itself more to the later Doctors because they have more of an arc. To, I was, was going to say into. that it might be easiest to do Tom, Tom Baker because there's so many to, to pick from. Yeah, to start with because you have you have the the you have the the climax with the Watcher. You have the the regeneration of you know him being silly with like the Harlequin outfit and the Viking outfit and stuff and uh huh okay mm. and then mm. and that's it I'm or? gonna say Tenant and it's gonna be uh, New Earth because we'll just skip over Christmas Evasion we'll just take it as red here's his origin story right uh, that's that feels more new in a way <clears throat> uh, and then it jumps to the middle part's the tough part because you kind of have to end this with the end of time unfortunately <laughs> but uh, oh no actually I would not end it with I'd end it with Waters of Mars, Mars, Mars. And, and, this, and just leave it on a cliffhanger you could even yeah. end it with Journey's End um, say he are killed by the Dalek I think yeah I think that's that. true yeah. but then what the what the middle one is that's a tough part hmm that middle well it did I mean hats off to Empire Strikes Back and Two Towers because that's uh those are tough movies to yeah. come up with you know um I, so it's gotta be where it takes a bit of a twist and goes downhill a bit so maybe it's the uh Don, why can't I remember the name for God's sake? Donna's first one. Runaway Bride? Runaway Bride, yeah. Thank you, Runaway Bride. I don't know why that's getting my head. Um but then but then that one he kind of turns a bit darker and has to build himself back up for Journey's End. Hmm. 
boy, oh boy. Yeah, that's uh, I'm 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 thinking of Matt Smith's doctor actually here. Um, but I haven't I haven't thought through it at all. Eleventh Hour is such a great episode that that feels like the first movie, and then. It ends with Day of the Doctor, basically. I think that's the ending. Not Time of the Doctor. Day of the Doctor is the last movie. And mm. what would be the middle one, though? What's the middle one? Where do you put in the middle? Well, it has to be some, has I know. The middle part is the toughest part. It yeah. has to be something dark or whatever. Then, I mean, Doctor's Life, maybe. Um, uh, could be. Boy, oh, boy. I think, I or, think if or you do Capaldi, kind of lends himself to or this, Or do too. more, more like um, the, the Series 6 arc. With with you know preparing for his own death and the blue envelopes and oh I see what you mean impossible astronaut and stuff but that never really wraps up though that's the problem with that one eh, oh boy how about, how about with this although, with Cabaldi, although you can combine Cabaldi them to start with you can combine them like you don't have to have like here's three episodes to serve as movies you can combine them according to the the questions so oh, okay we can do that if we need to like take bits from impossible astronaut so, yeah. and cram it together with. Uh, Wedding River Song, perhaps, or something and, like that. And Closing Time at the end. and Yeah. 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 Actually so, okay, well, my Capaldi idea, right. I think you start with Into the Dalek, uh, <clears throat> and then you go to Death in Heaven and the two-parter. Yeah. Um, and, so, and then you end with Heaven Sent, because it's all his quest to find Gallifrey. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good, uh, actually. How, and, yeah. I don't know into, how into the Dalek figures into except I don't want to start with deep breath because there's a lot of irrelevant nonsense to what we're doing right now. Right. Uh, but that starts with him kind of being, and it shows his arc from like nasty as hell to better. Um, and then it, and it also kind of pushes him on his way to find Gallifrey, and which he doesn't do in Death in Heaven. And then when you get to the end, it ends with him finding Gallifrey. You don't need to do anything else. He's just mm-hmm. there, and that's the end. What was the middle trilogy? And it's a great episode to end on. Yeah, what was the middle trilogy again there, Warren, what, the middle part? I think Death in Heaven and uh, Dark Water. Uh, Death in Heaven and Dark Water, which means you have to have a missy thing in there. Um, but maybe that actually stands up on its own. Hmm. Maybe not into the Dalek as much as maybe like... Yeah, that's my weakest part of that. I think, ah, I'm here's what... Road, Road or Sherwood, maybe? No, God no. Um, because he's, he's a doubter and he's like, uh, and he's I, the I'm actually, guy and he's I'm exciting. actually, I'm actually thinking, kill the moon, <laughs> kill the moon as the first one because it ends. Okay, yeah, with Clara like basically leaving. Um, I could, I could see kill the moon being more the middle one because of Clara leaving and the the moral conundrums and you know the decision being taken away and. Mm. Okay, well, yeah, Clara leaving, and then let's get rid of, well, let's combine uh, the, the stuff of looking for Gallifrey from, uh, uh, what's it called, Death in Heaven, get rid of all the other stuff and the Missy stuff, but have Clara come back somehow, or he's hunting for no, Clara. No, no, because, no, 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 here it is, here it is. Boy, we're, this this is turning into the trilogy. This is the actual movie, folks. It, it starts off with Kill the Moon, uh, and then she leaves basically right at the end of kill the moon, but somehow we work yeah. in, I tell you what, we work in, uh, another episode like M- mummy and the Orient Express or something almost was like a pre-credit sequence or the, like the, the sail barge sequence in return of the Jedi. But then she, le- Clara leaves at the end of the first one at the end of kill the moon essentially. And we only, she comes back when she's angry at the doctor and demands to have the key to, uh, to bring Danny ah. pink back. You see, that's actually how Clara comes back after kill the moon. And then, gotcha, gotcha. and then it goes through death and heaven. Then it all ends and stuff. And so we have the Danny Pink thing in in the second movie of this trilogy. And then you're right. And then heaven. And then we lose Clara at the beginning. We basically have to work and face the Raven somehow. And, and heaven sent is the last two thirds of that of that third movie. And yes, then he he finds Gallifrey. And then uh, you want to end it on a cliffhanger like that? That's it. Without yeah. Clara? Yeah, you just yeah. ended with him because that's his whole goal is to yeah. find Gallifrey. And also, yeah. Missy can be in it as a second because she's just the second movie's villain. It's like the yeah. Joker in Dark Knight. Exactly. Never comes back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like Bosk. <laughs> like Bosk, exactly. <laughs> yeah, just like Bosk. Speaking of Doctor Who connections. Or IG-88. Yeah. Take your pick from the, you know. Yeah. Man, I think we saw, I think we got a winner there. I think we got a winner. I think we should submit that to... Uh, Lucasfilm or whoever's, but Disney, it'll be Disney by the time this thing gets made. But uh, <laughs> Just throw it at Disney. Yeah, they got nothing else to do. Why not? All right. Um, I tell you, we got uh, time enough for one more fluid link. La- All right. Oh, good. Uh, Michelle, Lee, <laughs> Michelle Lee heard about this uh, late this morning, I think, and quickly submitted some questions. So it seems right that we get one in. Uh, are you intrigued by rumors that season series 12 will have an arc considering the success 
of Broadchurch. Are there rumors? I haven't heard any rumors, but I stay yeah, away from are. rumors. There are rumors. I have heard rumors, but rumors. I'm ah, fine, I guess. Sure. I, um, like, there wasn't an arc this time, and there was, like, hints of one. I look at it like Moffat looked at the Matt Smith era, as far as, like, just mixing things up. Mm-hmm. So you have the full series, you have the split series, you have the you have the big uh, blockbuster type episodes. So I mean, you, there's nothing wrong with with having different stuff. You've had the series that's all standalone, with the exception of mm-hmm. Tim Shaw, you know, in um, Av Colos. Yeah. Um, so yeah, why not? I am I am in favor. I think a lot of people, well, me anyway. Uh, it, it might, expecting I mean, it series might, eleven to have a have a, an arc just because of the Broadchurch connection, you know. It might, um, it might. I guess it might depend on 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 what arc it is, how how strong. So, like, if it's something like, would it? Okay, so would it be better or worse to have something like loose associations, like Bad Wolf or Mister Saxon or Torchwood? Like, because those are like just brief and 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 they're they're not really that tied together, even yeah. though it's the same phrasing. Like, I mean, would you want I've, something I'd rather stronger? Chibnall did that. Or? No, because and I'll tell you why. Okay. Because Chibnall is not a details guy like Moffat is. And that's not bad. It's just the way he operates. So I think if he did an RTD-style arc, it would be better than if he did a Moffat-style, super complicated one, which sometimes got too complicated for its own damn good. Yeah, I, I, you know, our arcs per se in, in, in previous series of Modern Doctor Who were, you know, basically standalone adventures with connecting tissue, so to speak. To do a mm-hmm. full-on arc, I think, I mean, that's something that modern who hasn't really properly done yet. And honestly, that is the way of the TV universe right now is to do arcs. Um, if that was, yeah, but I'm kind of happy. It doesn't do that. I am honest, not. I'm I, getting sick, sick of arcs. Well, I am, I'm intrigued. I, I, uh, well, you said this before about how the one thing that I kind of missed about series 11 is that it didn't, necessarily make for appointment viewing because you didn't necessarily have to tune in the next week to see what happened it was just like another standalone adventure and if you missed one then fine you really didn't miss any character development or anything else and you just sort of you know watched an adventure of doctor who which is fine and dandy and stuff like that but i I would like to see doctor who sort of have that weekly hook and say where are they going to next Uh, you know a long 10 part story essentially is something they haven't really tried i would very much welcome that well, you got trial of time, Lord. But you do have trial of time, different. but even that, in a way, you know, it was the trial was the connecting thing, but then the stories themselves, which they were watching on the on the Matrix screen, were were completely different too. So there's, you know, it's kind of like Dalek's master plan in a way, but uh, might be the the best analog of such a thing. So yeah, I would welcome it myself. Warren, not so much. Chris, yeah, yes, I'm middling on. Yeah. I'd like to see whatever they want to try. Go ahead and try. I, I'm not going to tell them not to. <laughs> as, <laughs> although you do have that right as a fan warrant to tell them and have them listen to you well of well. course i do yeah absolutely like mm-hmm. <laughs> I, you you will ship who i tell you to ship yeah exactly <laughs> yeah as as one who back in the day was like just hooked on on um, Stephen bochco's murder one mm-hmm. which was a 20 whatever episode arc um yeah i, I lapped that stuff up so I, i'd totally be game for a, like a 10 episode arc mm-hmm. me too Make it happen, Chris Shidwell. Again, pause recording, reshoot everything if this is not actually what's happening so that we can make the show that we really want to see. Also, work in our Peter Capaldi movie trilogy if you can in there somewhere too. Thanks. And thanks to you, everyone, for playing Fluid Links. Thanks, everyone, uh, for sending in your questions and comments. We'll do another one of these probably sometime. Maybe not for quite a while, though, because we've got a whole bunch of stuff coming up, uh, like, in two weeks' time for, I think, basically, it falls, like, uh, at the beginning of our anniversary week, 13th anniversary of doing this podcast, everyone. We're doing a commentary for uh, Terror of the Zygons, our last classic series commentary of the calendar year. So so uh, stay tuned for that in a couple weeks. But next week... For episode 700, 700, uh, Graham Kibble White, he who uh, not only put us in Doctor Who magazine, so we are thankful to him for the rest of eternity, but he's also uh, uh, behind TV Ears, the uh, the magazine that we talked about when it launched, I think last year at some point. They've put out uh, two or three issues since then. They finally got around to the inevitable 
Doctor Who and sci-fi. There's a whole bunch of great stuff in the upcoming uh, issue that will drop uh, next week, including uh, the last interview done by Paul Darrow and a long lost, never heard before interview with John Pertwee from the late 1970s. So we're going to talk to Graham about that and other things to do with the magazine next week as we celebrate 700 numbered episodes of Radio Free Scarrow. Can you uh, believe got, the embed- Yeah, more than 700. I said numbered episodes. episodes. Well, I said numbered. No, That's we have, we numbered, have more yeah. than 700 numbered I episodes. I knew it. I knew this would happen. I know. You guys, you guys, ah, guys, before, I, before I joined, when you guys did um, All right. Here the end go. of season two, you had like yeah. 29A and 29B, or yeah. sorry, 8A and 8, 8, 8A and 8B, and then mm-hmm. we had, we had the, the one where we had the two different sets of casts, and we kind of flipped back and forth about which file would... It's, it's very important to end this uh, penultimate very. episode to 700 with numbered pedanting. Much, yep. much. This is why we celebrate years and not episodes, everyone. But yes. uh, if you want to, and this is why you're wrong, Stephen. Uh, as as always, I guess I can't I can't <laughs> top that. I can't top being wrong. So uh, until next week, everyone. I am Stephen in Edmonton. Or to Vancouver. And Chris in Edmonton. So long for now. You've been listening to Radio Free Scaro. Find us online at RadioFreeScarrow.com. Follow us on Twitter and Tumblr at Radio Free Scaro. Subscribe to us on iTunes and donate to the show at Patreon.com forward slash Radio Free Scaro. Thank you. Radio Free Scaro.